Um, welcome to City Service. I'm City Councilor Marianne Labarge, and I'm joined by Ward 2 City Councilor Karen Foster, who's Vice Chair, um, Ward 1 City Councilor Michael Quinlan, and Ward 7 City Councilor Rachel Mior. This meeting is called to order. Roll call, Laura. Um, Councilor Labarge. Here. Councilor Foster. Here. Councilor Maori. Here. And Councilor Quinlan. Here. Uh -oh. I would like to announce that this meeting is being audio video recorded. Public comment. Is no members of the public are present. I Okay, so there's being no members of the public present, so there's no public comment. The next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes of March 1st, 2021 and April 5th, 2021. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? If not, roll call, Laura. Okay, Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes. We have a department update from Animal Control Officer Shayla Howe. This is informal and answer discussion of extent and scope of Animal Control Officer's responsibilities and typical number of animals in care and in custody. Welcome Shayla to City Service Committee. I'm going to have you speak to us counselors about your depth, about your department as our animal control officer and learn more about what your job details. After you finish, I will open the floor for counselors to ask you specific questions or comments that they might have. I am asking counselors to be as brief as you can with your questions. Welcome, Sheila. Thank you. Um, so what would you like me to first talk about? Just basically the job in general? Yes, please. Okay, so um, I'm the animal control officer for the city. Um, I got I was hired in July of 2015. Um, so basically, I do um, most everything um, with animals that are loose um, or abandoned. Um, cats and dogs, I handle wildlife, I uh, handle livestock, I do barn inspections. I'm also the animal inspector, so I have to do quarantines. Um, and uh, rabies testing, so I do a lot of that, sending out bats and stuff. Um, the job is a very, uh, there's many tasks in the job. I'm trying to think of what else would you guys like to know about this position? Shayla, when did you say you started with the city? Uh, July, 2015. And I do have a question for you, probably a couple of them quickly. Um, are you the dog control officer in Williamsburg also? Yes, yeah, so I started in Williamsburg um, way before I started in Northampton. I believe it was 2012 or 2013. Um, so as of a few months ago, I have tried to resign, but they don't have anyone, they haven't been able to find anyone to uh, fill the position. So they've asked me to stay on for a little bit more time till they can find someone. How many hours a week were you putting in as a dog officer in Williamsburg? Oh, uh, it can vary, um, but it's very limited. And that's why I'm trying to get out is because I just don't even have the few hours that is needed for the job in Williamsburg out of it. So I work for Northampton full-time and Williamsburg is just around in my spare time. So nights, weekends, after hours, that type of thing. Thank you. Also too, I know that the mayor had mentioned to us that one of the meetings that we had um, about a new building, you know, new shelter being put in place 
for our animals here, our cats and dogs in the city. And he was saying how you have to travel to Amherst. I was told by somebody that apparently you have not been going to Amherst now, that you're going to Hadley. It's that hotel that they have there. Is that true or not, Sheila? So that was true. So back in 2015, we were dealing with just Amherst. So I would drive back and forth to Amherst all the time. Um, and there's only one ACO for Amherst and we would kind of, she would take the majority of care of the dogs, but, um, for anything else, I would have to do it. And then when she was not available to, I would still have to go down there. So it was taking up a lot of the time, just as of last year, we were able to get a contract with Wagon Tails and Hadley, but they have decided to not, uh, renew the contract. So as of, um, July 1st now, we have not had any, and a little bit before that, we have not had uh, anywhere to bring our animals currently. So and at, also the, at the hotel in Hadley, when did you start that and when did you end going there? So it ended, um, they stopped taking in dogs, I believe it was June 13th of this year. And we had just only started that um, I would say last summer. I don't know the exact time, but I don't. I believe it was after July okay. of last year, um, and it was only so they did take in dogs and cats, um, but we also have used other resources in the city. So they were only a year contract, and before that, we after Amherst, we had nowhere for a while to bring them at all, um, and so I've kind of use different vet clinics in the areas as I could. Um, and then I uh, personally fostered animals and, and I've tried, you know, fostering them out to other people I know too. Thank you very much, Sheila. Any other counselors have questions? Counselor Mayor. Shayla, now I'm pitching your living room full of <laughs> dogs, <laughs> fostering dogs. Well, I have a lot of my own. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get it. That's why, yeah, I'd be a big foster fail, so that's why I can't do it. But anyway, um, yeah, I just was, um, I, my original questions that I had sent in were basically like, what, are, what challenges do you face now? And how do you see like the animal control facility helping those or playing with the, and, and really what kind of supports could you use uh, to so the really, that, you're faced, that you face? So the, the main thing is getting a facility. That would be a huge improvement to the job. We, right now between, we never have a contract that is going to last. And we're really begging and pleading with other areas and other towns and other businesses to let us board our animals there. And usually at um, low cost. Um, so we really need a facility to be able to house all our animals at once. It's, it makes it very difficult when I have three cats at the Florence Animal Clinic and two dogs at Wagon Tails and you know this one there and this one there. It makes it very difficult to be able to deal with all the animals versus if we had a facility, they would all be at the same facility and I would just be going to one place to feed and water all of them and care for them all there. On top of just even having supplies, all our supplies would be in one location, all our uh, food would be in one location, all the, the crates and um, just everything would be all in one location. So that would really make it so much easier. Um, the other thing is, is having someone else, another ACO. Um, I do this full-time and you could even use probably another full-time officer. And I know that they just approved for another part-time officer. So that will be a great help for this position because it, it, you know, especially when I'm on vacation, there's really no one else to fill my shoes as to do the things that I need to do when I'm not around. Um, so having another ACO that can do exactly as I do would be great for this position. That makes sense, Shayla, thanks. I have one more question, but I wanna get, let other counselors go. <laughs> I'll come back if there's time. Thank you. Yep. 
Councillor Foster. <clears throat> Thanks, Shayla, for being here. Um, you actually drove by me this morning in Leeds. I was the cyclist that didn't quite make it up Audubon Road and I was ready to be like, hey, wait, we're gonna talk later. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, thank you for being here. Um, yes. And I had a, a, a couple of questions. Um, you know, I really hear the need for a facility and um, I, I'm sorry that the contract with Wagon Tails and Headley ended as well. I hadn't, I hadn't realized that. So I can see that the time pressure, you know, of course the facility is not going to be built tomorrow, but you must be really feeling the pressure of what, what are we going to do? One, one question I had is as the plans for, you know, the like very potential facility on Chapel Street, as the mayor was talking about that with us, one of the things that, that I think some counselors were, we were a little concerned about, I, I was reading the room or reading the Zoom, um, was the plan that, um, you know, because you're working full time during the day, but the sort of evening overnight weekend, I was wondering how you see that with a facility, how you see that being handled for animals in Northampton's care. Well, so it would still be my responsibility to care for them. And so at nighttime, um, as any ACO facility in the area, Southwick, Belchertown, they are all not attended at night. Um, no one is there as soon as the shift is over, they tuck all the animals in and they leave them until the next morning when they come back in. Um, and that's pretty common as well as at vet clinics, unless you have a 24 hour vet clinic, there's usually not someone there. But so how I see it um, as I work full time during the day, how I see it is, um, you know, with the other ACO, we would work hand in hand or officers still would be able to go over there and feed them. Just, I'd have everything laid out for them and they just have to put the bowl in of food and just check the water and that kind of situation. Um, right now, since we don't have a kennel facility, we actually have two dogs in the police station right now and they just have to stay in crates and the officers are taking them in and out as best they can. You know, they're working all the time too on many different calls but so they're trying to manage that while I am you know out of the office and then when I come back in the office I take over that kind of responsibility um so maybe in the far future um I could see it as you know we get a really dedicated volunteer list together or volunteer crew where possibly you know we had rotating shifts or if there is a way to split up um, a per diem person to feed on weekends sometimes, you know, just have like a fill-in person between me and the other ACO, um, that would be helpful. And that's usually kind of how it is handled at other facilities in the area. And the best two that I can say to look at would be to Belchertown, because they are very comparable in size to us and Southwick. And those are the two shelters that I really um, admire how they operate and what they look like and how they're just laid out. Thanks, I appreciate hearing that. And I think there would be a number of people as the discussions were happening a couple months ago, I would imagine there would be a number of people interested in volunteering. So I'm glad to hear your openness to that too. Thank you. Yes. Councillor Quinlan, do you have any questions? Well, I, I was just gonna ask uh, again, Shayla, thanks for being here. Uh, it's, it's good to have you here to, to talk about this with us so we can understand better uh, the ACO operation. And then, but ask you what, what is, so your schedule is Monday through Friday during the day and then you, the assistant ACO, what's the schedule there? Just so I, just in terms of understanding what the coverage is for the community. So there hasn't been an ACO for, I would believe at least a year. Um, and so really it's just, I have been Monday through Friday and then I am on call after hours and weekends and holidays. Um, but the police department, they do respond to a lot of my calls. Um, and as long as they can handle the call, they don't call me in to come in on that. But as I see it, um, it would be great if the ACO, the next ACO, um, with the 20 hour position could have like a set schedule of during the week. Um, or, you know, even after hours, say they work from five to seven or something like that a few times a week. And then they would also be responsible for if I'm not available to come in when there's emergency. Right. So you, you would maybe split up the, the, the on call part of it. That's what I'm hoping. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's great. That's, that's, that's good thinking. Uh, super. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Councillor Muir. Yeah, uh, my patio umbrella just just flew away. So we're in the woods. It was crazy. This is a crazy storm. Um, yeah, I just kind of uh, building on what what uh, Council Quinlan was saying, and and I, I've been wondering. I know I know that animal um, control was once not housed in the under the police department. I don't know if that was when you were here in 2015. Uh, so I'm just trying to picture if you had the facility and some extra support. Um, how how do you feel about? Uh, there's been talk about you know just kind of re kind of revisiting. Um, the responsibilities in the police department. And I'm just wondering your kind of thoughts or feelings about if animal control was moved to another 24 seven department, um, how, you know, what, what you think about that, I guess, Shayla. Um, I don't think it would make uh, a huge difference. I don't see. Um, I mean, I think the police would still respond to calls when we were not on duty, um, just because I think that's how Northampton is handling these days. Um, and, you know, if you look at other areas, they aren't usually based out of once there is a kennel, they're usually based out of the kennel and that's where they report to and they, um, you know, care for the animals there and they have their office there. And that's usually how it's kind of a mobile position because you're usually on the go. So I spend a lot of time in my cruiser, um, versus what I do in the office here. Um, so I have to pull over a lot and I'll sit on the side of the road and type up, you know, notes or reports or anything like that. So it's really mobile. But if I had a place where all the dogs were, it, it'd be a lot easier. Um, you know, I'd be around the animals and I could take care of them during the day as well as get the regular work done in between going out on calls. Um, and I forget the first part of your question. I'm so sorry. Oh, I was just wondering if when you came in 2015, I, I believe the animal control didn't used to be housed under the de uh, police department. I don't know if that were true when you first arrived. Well, so since I've been in 2015, uh -oh. been here in no. July, it has been housed under the police department. But before I was um, okay. hired, it was a, um, it was not an employee position. It was a uh, general contractor position I guess is how you would say it like 1099 and it was their own business and um, Nancy Graham ran it before that and she had one assistant she had hired under her and I think she put a bid in for the city for her how she was paid every year or contract um, but so she did sometimes come into the police department to like read logs and stuff like that but for the majority of it, she worked out of um, the van or her house office, I believe. Okay, thanks so much, Shayla. And yeah, really, thank you for your work. Uh, you know, I, w a few years ago, there was a peacock in my yard and it's great to have someone to call when that happens. You yes. Know? <laughs> this is like, wow, that's a great thing to have, animal control. <laughs> I have no idea what to do with this peacock in my yard. Yeah. So, I believe <laughs> yeah, Shella, um, with Nancy Graham, if I can recall, you're right about her having a contract because I knew Nancy Graham very, very well because I showed dogs and so forth. Anyways, she did rent off in West Stampton with a cousin of hers, which was Kim Robbs, which was a shelter for miniature collies for showing and so forth like that and breeding. And she had a really good system going on there. And I, I have to say really, really good, good things about Nancy Graham. She was excellent with her phone calling and getting back to residents and so forth like that. But another question I have is you talking about the night shift. And I have really concerns about the night shift with animals, period. And especially showing dogs all our life in a family. I have great concerns when dogs are left by themselves. You're saying Belchertown and Southwick facilities, they don't have anybody there at nighttime. My question is, say all of a sudden you have a dog that's under stress. What happens there? You have surveillance cameras? 
Well, that would be something that I would hope would be there no matter what, whether it was staffed or wasn't, would be surveillance cameras. I mean, I personally have dogs at home 24 seven. I have eight dogs had upwards of a lot more than that and I have surveillance cameras on every single one of them when they are left unattended um, and but it is very normal practice to leave a kennel at night you would not leave a dog that is sick or under stress or any of that that would then be transferred to a local veterinary clinic so it would only be for the healthy dogs um, and they wouldn't be allowed out access outside so there'd be an indoor outdoor run but they'd only be allowed access indoors which is very common practice. And same with at Amherst, um, they're left unattended at night. So when they leave, they're, they're over there at night. It's just basically like they're sleeping in a crate. Um, so it is very common practice and it would be the same thing for cats too. Um, the police department though, I believe would be able to go in there and check on them if I needed them to or feed them or um, drop off an animal if they pick another one up throughout the shift. So I do believe that there would you know, be someone around, or I could call the police department to go deal with that kind of situation too, if I saw something and um, it wasn't needed that I need to come in, but they just needed to go uh, check on them. How many hours did you put in a week through the city? Um, it's, it's a range, but it's normally 35 hours a week is my full-time schedule. Um, but I can work upwards of I mean, it's fluctuated throughout the years. Um, normally it's around 40 though, I would say. Okay, I am hoping that, and I know our mayor is working tirelessly to find a site so that we can go ahead and build a new facility. And I would be, and I welcome you having a second position to help you out, I think that that is needed, there's no question about it. We have so many people in our city who are dog lovers, cat lovers, animal lovers, period. We have chickmunks, we have turkeys, we have, we have deer out here in our property and I love them. We have rabbits and all and turkeys and I love them. But me as a dog lover, I mean, I'm just so worried about dogs being left at nighttime. And I'm not just the only one in the city. I have many friends who are concerned about dogs being left by themselves at nighttime because things can happen. I had a Russian wolfhound, which we've shown all over the world. And that dog was home with us on my lap, laying there, and all of a sudden had difficulties breathing and was gone just like that. Just like that. If we were not home, nobody would have been here for her. So that's my concerns. I have... And I hear from many of my friends that are dog lovers, we need to build a new facility and hearing you. And to me, using our police officers, I have great concerns about that because I feel that there should be another position working with you and our police have enough to do in our city with accidents, burglary, whatever is going on. And I appreciate them doing that. But I, I hear the voices in the city about making your position separate from the police department. And, and I think that should be done, definitely. So thank you, Sheila. You're welcome. Are there any more questions? Sheila, thank you for being here. And let's hope that Things will happen soon. The mayor, and I know before he leaves, he'll help whoever's going to become our mayor to find a site. And hopefully you'll be settled in. And hopefully as counselors, we can help you get that position. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're ready to move on. Okay, we have um, items referred to committee by city council on June 7th, 2021. Energy and sustainability. Ashley Musbrett, I would be willing to accept a motion for reappointment on her and reading about her in general. Um, she lives at 15 Franklin Street, Northampton. 
Her term is July 2021 through June 2024, and she is a reappointment. So I would be willing to accept the motion for reappointment. Move to recommend reappointment. Second. We have a motion and a second to forward Ashley Mosbrett to the energy and sustainability with a positive recommendation to full city council. Is there any discussion? Roll call, Laura. Councillor LaBarge. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes. The motion is unanimous. The Board of Health. Um, we have two reappointments. We have Cynthia Swapitz, 19 Ward Crossing, Northampton, term July 2021 through June 2024. And that's her reappointment. Laurent Levy for School Street, Northampton, term July 2021 through June 2024 on a reappointment. Um, I would be willing to accept the motion for two reappointments to the Board of Health. Move to um, move to recommend reappointment. Second. We have a motion and a second to forward Cynthia Swapitz and Laurent Levy to the Board of Health with a positive recommendation to full city council. Is there any discussion? Roll call, Laura. Councillor LaBarge. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Thank you. Transportation and parking. Diana Day, 44 Berkshire Terrace, apart, apartment two, Northampton, term July 2021 through June 2024. And that is to fill a vacancy. And I did interview Diana Day. We had a very good conversation. And um, I like what she had presented to me. She had wrote to me also to provide additional information to you regarding her application to serve on transportation and parking committee for the city of Northampton. As you may know, our family relocated to Northampton in January of 2021. We were looking for a vibrant electric city with great public schools, cultural experiences, and outdoor activities for everyone in our family, a place where we and our children could make our forever home. Northampton has exceeded my expectations in every way. Community and public service is important to Diana. And she has applied to the commission in hopes of contributing to the, our city as our, her family works to get to know the area and the people. I have always been involved in community service activities, including volunteering for a youth organization, serving legal clients pro bono, and participating in community service events. Before moving to Northampton, I worked in direct government service as an attorney representing state and municipal governments. Through that experience, I learned how satisfying it can be to work on issues that make a tangible difference in people's lives. My litigation work often involved issues with roadway design and maintenance. And I discovered that I have a strong interest in the design of highways, streets, bike paths, and sidewalks that allow a city to work. I consider it one of the highlights of my career when I helped to discover the cause of a series of fatal accidents on a particular stretch of roadway and I successively lobbied to have it repaired. The values and perspective that I will bring to the position are a focus on community safety and accessibility for our diverse and vibrant community. As we all recover from the pandemic, we have the opportunity to consider how the roads and transportation will impact a business community that looks to recover economically and a citizenry that is looking at to re-engage re with community life. I believe it is important to balance those needs while ensuring that the transportation system is accessible as possible given the resources available. Yours truly regards Diana Day. 
I just found her very, very interesting talking with her. So I moved to forward the recommendation of Diana Day to transportation and parking with a full recommendation to full city council. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? If not, Laura Rokoff. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Mayori. Yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Okay, next one. <clears throat> Number seven. 21.295 appointments to various committees referred by city council on June 17th, 2021. Agricultural Commission, Stan Zawalik, 538 Sylvester Road, Florence, Mass. Term July, 2021 through June, 2024, reappointment. I will be willing to expect, accept a motion for reappointment. Move to... Recommend reappointment. Second. We have a motion and a second to forward Stan Sawalik to the Agricultural Commission with a positive recommendation to full city council. Is there any discussion? Roll call, Laura. Um, Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Coster. Yes. Councillor Mayori. Yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Disability Commission. We have two reappointments. Jeremy McCormick Dubs, 20 Hamden Avenue, Apartment 301, Northampton, Mass. Term July 2021 through June 2024. Linda Kakos, 220 Rocky Hill Road, Florence, Mass. Term July 2021 through June 2024. Another reappointment. We, we did just vote that, didn't we? I thought that was the motion that we had right previous to. No, no that's Dan Zawalik, yeah. I'm sorry, I thought we did the Disability Commission and that was a motion. Oh my goodness. Okay, I wrote it in the wrong place. I apologize. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> ignore me. Okay, okay. So, thank you. So I'd be willing to accept the motion for the two reappointments to the Disability Commission. Move a positive recommendation for reappointment to members of the Disability Commission. Second. We have a motion and a second to forward Jeremy McComer, Dubs, and Linda Kakos with a positive recommendation to full city council. Roll call, Laura. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Mayori. Yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Okay, Northampton Housing Authority Board of Commissioners. Maureen Carney, 13 Church Street, Northampton, Mass. Term July 2021 through June 2026 to fill a vacancy. And Councilor Quillen, would you give your report on your conversation of your applicant, Maureen Carney? Uh, I'm happy to. I should should start by just saying that uh, Maureen Carney uh, was a supporter of mine in my previous campaign uh, for election and uh, gave me a financial support as well as well as being just a wonderful advisor as the previous uh, counselor from Ward One. Uh, Maureen and I had a really lovely conversation for a few minutes. I, I really admire Maureen a lot. Uh, it says to fill a vacancy, but we both kind of chuckled about the fact that Maureen had been on the housing authority as the labor representative before she was a city councilor. So she's really kind of returning to the uh, housing authority board in a lot of ways. Uh, she's, she's very passionate about it. She's really looking forward to it. She's, she's been uh, you know, working with uh, talking to Marilyn Richards about being involved again and with the mayor and she's she's very excited for it. And I think because of her previous experience, plus her experience on the council, uh, she's going to add a voice to that uh, with a perspective that that will be just terrific and a, and a really, uh, I think, very important voice at that. So I would um, move a positive recommendation for Maureen Carr. Okay, we have a second. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to forward Maureen Kearney to the Northampton Housing Authority Board of Commissioners. Is there any discussion? Roll call, Laura. Is the, the second, Councillor Mayori, it's hard to tell when I'm not looking. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Labarge? Yes. Councillor Foster? Yes. 
Councillor Mayori. Yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Council on Aging. Right. We have Jerry Ann Butler, 46 Autumn Drive, Florence, Mass, term July 2021 through June 2024, which is a reappointment. So um, I'd be willing to accept the motion for a reappointment. Uh, reappointment recommendation? Second. We have a motion and a second to forward Jeremy Butler with a positive recommendation to full city council. Is there any discussion? Roll call, Laura. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Mayori. Yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Okay, Rachel, you might have to help me with this name. Um, Ann Romano. <laughs> okay, Council on Aging. We have Ann Romano. Is that right? Yep. 351 Pleasant Street, Unit 6, Northampton, Mass, term July 2021 through June 2023 to fill a vacancy. So, Council Mayor, can you give us your report on your conversation with the applicant, Ann Ramono? Yeah. And so, um, Ann had actually volunteered um, regularly at the senior center some years ago, and then she, she her job took her away. And she she actually her office is based in Hartford, but um, she got me thinking about one of the positive things that coming out of the, the pandemic is silver lining is she went remote and she's not being asked to come back. Uh, and now she feels like she can really um, volunteer regularly, regularly again in the community. Uh, so she's really excited. She, she found it incredibly gratifying to work with seniors in Northampton. And so she, she has some, she just really wants to kind of match seniors with programs and, and come up with innovative programs and supports for them. I think she's a great match and it's um, heartening to think that maybe, you know, this transition that a lot have made the remote, you know, maybe it will give, kind of shake out some more uh, community volunteers. So I recommend uh, her appointment. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to forward the appointment of Ann Ramono to the Council on Aging with a positive recommendation to full city council. Is there any discussion? Roll call, Laura. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Mayori. Yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Planning Board, Corrine Koya, 26 Bedford Terrace, Apartment 2, Northampton, Associate Member, term July 2021 through June 2024 to fill a vacancy. Councillor Foster, could you give us your report on your conversation with the applicant, Corrine Koya? Sure, yeah, we, ha we had a great conversation. Um, she was really interesting applicant to the Planning Board, Corrine's a um, legislative aide uh, with Natalie Blay. And she, Corinne lives in Northampton. Um, and she said that originally she had applied actually for the Agricultural Commission. Um, but then uh, her background, her college research, and a lot of the work she does um, in her job is, is agriculture related. Um, but there, she didn't meet the requirements of owning agricultural property um, to serve on that commission. And so court in the mayor's office um, suggested she consider the planning board. She was looking for one of the more active boards and commissions and has a wealth of, of government experience. And so, um, you know, she's she's very well versed in infrastructure and the sort of government langu language. Um, you know, she's young, she rents, um, and she's really interested in, um, you know, serving in municipal government and recognizes the sort of day-to-day -day impact of, of the more local um, decisions. And so, uh, you know, I, I would move to recommend um, occur in for um, a positive recommendation. Second. Hey, we have a motion and a second to forward the appointment of Corrine Coyette to the planning board with a positive recommendation to post the council. Is there any discussion? Roll call, Laura. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Mayori. Yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Okay. Number eight, new business. 
Um, we are going to have the month of August off so far, not unless something comes up and it's a dire emergency. If I'm not around, Counselor Karen Foster can go ahead and run the meeting or whatever. But we need to think about who we'd like to bring in for the month of September. And I really would appreciate if your counselors could get your thinking caps on and who we'd like to have come in to speak in September. I know talking with some people over the weekend, a lot of people would wish that we'd have Chief Jody Casper come in and that's up to you counselors of if you'd like to have her come in and talk and so forth with us, whatever. Whatever you wanna do, I'll do. Council Mior. Well, I was just thinking, um... I, I was I got a call from a someone from Hampshire Heights, and then it was talking about the, the board of the, of the housing authority. And I don't know, you know, I guess I don't know, to be honest, the whole structure and accountability is that a city service. It's kind of, you know, but we're we're but now that we're appointing people to the board, I was just thinking it, it would be really nice to, to have someone from the board or someone uh, who works with you know works with the with the um, public housing or the housing authority I, I, I guess I'm looking to my counselors to tell me if that's appropriate or not but she, she asked me a lot of questions I didn't know the answer to and she felt like there's a real disconnect between the values in Northampton and things that go on at you know are required at the housing authority like she she wants a garden that's right outside her window and she can't have it and things like that and, and we were talking in a larger way about is there a way for you know for community members um, to feel more plugged in to the for, for the public housing to feel more plugged into the larger community? Just broad questions, but I don't know if, if if that's appropriate. So, I don't know. I know as a counselor, I attended three or four of the meetings over the air conditionings that being pulled out of their windows. Mm. Oh right. I, went, yeah. I spoke, said what I had to say, and. I mean, we have a good chair, Marilyn Richards now. you got Maureen Carney now coming in. And um, we and have Elizabeth Gardo. Silver on there. Yes, really good people there. Yeah. I don't know where we stand as far as bringing them in. Laura, I think you need to talk with the mayor about that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I started something, Laura. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I, do. It, I, I think it might be something that comes up in the city council um, rules committee too, because they've talked uh, about trying to define the jurisdiction of the various committees or the structure. So I think it's up to the council what they want to do, who they want to allow to come in. Well, can you find out from the mayor also? Since it's a city council committee, I don't think he has any jurisdiction over it. I think it's but all the one that appoints and makes a recommendation to our committee. Right. right. Um, as far as appointments. Um, but as far I don't think we've ever, ever been involved as, lo as long as I've been a counselor with the housing authority. If they had meetings, I went on my own. Hmm. I believe she I came like in the idea. I think that we should be involved in it. I think she came into the legislative matters committee meeting when they were talking about the ordinance to expand the membership of the housing authority. Yes, I remember. So I know she had come in, but I think it was that committee. But yeah. I think it's totally up to the council as a body. I don't know if the other counselors have any interest. It was just an idea. I just really want to understand actually more how the kind of structure and its relationship to city government. Right. I like that idea. Oh. You know, I mean, I think being part of it with the involvement, Councilor Moriori, I think is excellent. Because mm. I think they need a lot of help. Yeah. Councilor Foster. Also, Mayor, I think that's a great suggestion. I, I agree. And I think it's additionally people expect us to sort of know what's going on, like you found with a constituent contacting you. Um, and so the deeper and broader our understanding, um, you know, the better for the better for us, but also for our constituents. So I, I like that idea quite a bit. Thank you. Maybe an advisory committee or something. 
would you guys like me to reach out to the housing authority and see if someone would be willing to attend? I don't think I'd even have to go through the mayor's office for that because they're not a city department. So I don't think I would, I could ask directly on your behalf. Yeah, why don't you do that? To the that's on Council Mary. Right, to the board though, is that, the I think board. we want someone from the board, not oh, like the executive the I don't know, I think those two okay. different perspectives. I, Actually, I would anyone would be great. <laughs> uh, they play different roles, and this is what I'm trying to understand. There's this executive director who's different from the housing manager, and then there's a the board. Um, right. So whoever, I guess I, you know, whoever you think it's appropriate to ask, I'd, I'd love to talk to any of them. It might be easier to get a board member, but that's just a guess. Mm -hmm. I, I think, like, I bet your um, Marilyn Richards would be available. Um, yeah, she's the chair right now. Yeah, exactly. Oh, she's excellent. And also invite the director from the House of Authority. Right. Well, Marilyn would be would be excellent because she was a city councilor, and I think she could really fill us in about that relationship. So um, she might be a good one to reach out and maybe, or if she can't do it, she could find another uh, member of the board or the director. Right. Yeah. So I, maybe Marilyn Richards is the person to start with. I think she is. Yeah, I like her too, so I'd love to see her again. <laughs> Sounds like a consensus, like the director or member of the board. I know because we never see anything about minutes or anything about what goes on down there. And that's, if you're hearing anything, you're getting phone calls as counselors, just like with the air conditioning and stuff like that. Hmm. Okay, so you're gonna find out, Laura. You're gonna see if you can get Marilyn Richards. All right, she might be at yeah. the Rotary Committee meeting next week, so maybe I'll see her there. Um, I like it. I like that idea. Sounds good. But anyways, new business. Is there any other new business, Councilor Quinlan? The. Uh... The September meeting is scheduled for Monday the 6th, which is also Labor Day. Yep. Oh, so if we want to think about moving that uh, to the yes. next day, Tuesday again, like we have today, I, you know. Yeah. Although the next day is Rosh Hashanah too. Um, oh, on the 7th? Yeah. Is that all right with everybody else? Councilor Foster? It's a I'm just pulling up my calendar right now. Um, hang on one second. Uh, council rules is meeting on Tuesday, but not till six. So I think that's plenty of time. When is that, I'm not even sure it'd be that week, actually. When is it going to be, Rachel, that meeting? It's on Tuesdays, but actually, I don't know if it's that Tuesday. I'd have to... Every Tuesday? No. Uh, once. Um, well, we haven't. Yeah, I think it's going to be once a month. So I, I just said that. But... Do you know what the date is on that? Oh, uh, I should know. The only one they've scheduled so far is the July 13th, officially. Yeah. I guess they, we don't they have to mention Tuesday is the preferred date. But we have at six, so that shouldn't be, that shouldn't interfere. That Tuesday is fine with me. Okay, so the 7th is fine on September with everybody? Four o'clock is okay? Thank you, Councillor Quinlan, for touching on that one. Okay. Well, we need a final motion. Move to adjourn. Second. Roll call, Laura. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Mayori. Yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes.